Hello everybody. I have the August Scroll box. Let's open it up and figure out what's inside and then make something with it. <laughs> oh, I'm done. I'm just gonna take this, leave. I'm done. This is all I need. Ah, oh, my favorite art supply. Mm. Say Kui Nor Hartmuth Heart. How do you pronounce that? Waffle texture on the back. If you've never used a kneaded eraser, you need to try it. They are my favorite erasers um, because if you don't know, when you use them, there's no eraser shavings. All right, the other thing I see right off the bat is the candy. And the other things are poking out of here. It looks like we have a palette. There's the list of supplies. We also have a, a Faber-Castell graphite watercolor pencil. And then this Derwent, um, I'm assuming a watercolor palette. Ooh, yes it is. Oh, what? oh that's so cool. Like, look at that, so, like a uh, translucent paper. Graphic designer in me like, Arr! it's a little chalky looking. Like the colors have sort of bounced around a bit, a little dirty. Um, but we have a watercolor brush in here. It's one of those ones that comes apart and that has a cap so that you can take the water with you. So this is definitely a travel palette. It's got a little sponge. These are the swatches. So we have sun yellow, mango, poppy red, dark plum, mid ultramarine, bright blue, racing green, teal green, kiwi, burnt yellow ochre, natural brown, and ink black. Look at what we are working with. All right, this looks like it's our scrawler box sticker. Yep, there we have it. Here's some art for this month. Featured artist is Milky Rat. And here is Milky Rat's art. And if you like their art, you can check them out. Here are some of their links. Looks like they have an Instagram, Twitch, a Patreon, Etsy, and YouTube. Very cool. I'm definitely going to check them out. I really like the way they draw faces and noses. Like, it's almost like a... I really like the texture of it all. And it looks like they've also included some paper and some funny long sheets of it. Interesting shape. Can I just appreciate the way that they put the little images of what you get on here? I think that just looks so cute. So we have the Derwent Inktense Pan Set. That's what this is. Oh, then also this is uh, the Faber-Castell. I think everything is listed on there. I think we got that right. It's the Faber-Castell Aquarella in 2B. And then my baby, the kneaded eraser. Oh, and they listed what type of paper this was actually. That's nice. It's the Botanical Ultra Smooth Watercolor Paper. It's got like a ripped edge to the side of it. I could probably cut that off if I didn't like it. 300 GSM made from 50% cotton and is bright white. It's a non-standard shape. <laughs> Isn't that what I said? With one deckled long edge. Oh, that's there's a word for that? Deckled. Ooh, I just learned a new word today. A deckled edge. Ooh la la. Deckled. <laughs> it says that can might help inspire a slightly different composition. Or it just looks like you ripped the side of your paper. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Alright, and the theme for August was watercolor wherever. This month we have supplied you with everything you need to paint wherever inspiration and creativity may find you. Uh-oh. It says try and paint somewhere different and see how that affects your art. And so they're trying to get me to go outside, leave my humble abode, and try and draw somewhere else. So maybe we should do that. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Go on a trip and a paper rocket ship. <laughs> Let's go. All right, I'm here. <laughs> I braved the wilderness. It's actually not so bad. They sell a lot of fudge over there. And there's also this really weird goat. <laughs> oh, my hair and the humidity are about to start World War III, and I feel really sticky. But <laughs> we are going to get this done. I've got my paper. I think I'll do it in a horizontal format. So I guess, what's that called? Landscape, since I'm sitting on a landscape. That makes sense, right? I found this really weedy area <laughs> right by, like, a giant river. So this is where I'm sitting. Oh, did you hear that? That was my wrist. Oh. I'm feeling really self-conscious. It's probably silly because um, I'm sure more people will watch this online than will ever see me here. There's not like a ton of people here. Um, I mean, I assume they're here for the fudge. I guess the real question is why isn't there more people here? I mean, guys, it's fudge. Okay, attempt number two. <laughs> I can already feel that like, I don't know, just sitting here and not being in my desk and not having like my art supplies surrounding me and not being just in my normal environment is just definitely affecting me and it's weird because it's like why why <laughs> oh yeah by the way my dog's here <laughs> he hasn't come over to the camera i'm sure he will i'm not gonna make him do it but i think he'll, he'll probably come over here he usually likes to be close to me 
I should probably mention what I'm drawing. <laughs> so, I've decided, since I feel so uncomfortable and sticky, <laughs> the environment is getting to me, I've decided to just draw exactly what I'm doing right now. Just because it feels so weird. I'm like, in the middle of this... Uh, I'm right by a parking lot, actually, and <laughs> there's people. And I'm sitting here with my tripod and a camera drawing by a river. It just feels weird. I feel uncomfortable, okay? And I've decided to use these emotions because as artists, we're supposed to transfer our emotions onto paper, right? Right? That, that's what we're supposed to do. So I'm trying to draw this scenario on paper just to try and convey some form of what I'm feeling, you know? I just want to, I want to illustrate that. These legs are just no good, are they? <laughs> At least I get to use my eraser. This isn't the exact position I'm in, but I was sitting like this before. Now I'm sitting kind of like cross-legged, you know, crisscross applesauce. <laughs> but I want to draw it with the knees up in the air, so I guess it would look a bit more like this. Eh? How's that look? Huh? 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 <laughs> there are so many hornets here. <laughs> if I get stung... Oh. Oh. Oh, you want to come? <gasps> Puppy! Yeah! <laughs> Say hello! Your head's in the way. I cannot see if I am drawing this hornet correctly. Oh my gosh, why are you being so cute? You're never like this. You're never like this. <laughs> I can barely move my arm. <laughs> it's like wearing a doggy bracelet. Does anyone else, like, if they're like laying down and they're like about to get up and then their dog comes and like lays down in their lap and they're like, well, guess I'm not going anywhere for the next couple hours. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. It's just so cute. I think I'm almost done with like the sketch. It might be time to add like color. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> oh, bye bye baby. Since the sketch is in green, I think I will start with the color green. I don't know, it seems logical, right? <laughs> Although none of these greens are quite the right color, so I think I'm just gonna mix all three of them. So oh, that color seems a bit better. And then I can put this on the as the grass area of the drawing. This is, I really like this color actually. <laughs> it's very like desaturated. So maybe if I can use like a more saturated color for the character, it'll pop. That'd be cool. I can also use this color for those like big tall weeds in the background. So I also want a little bit more variation in color in like those little weeds. So I think I'll add some brown to the same green color and that'll hopefully give me a bit of a different color. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I think that's working. Yeah. So I've got a pretty earthy toned picture here and I want to color in the tripod and my tripod is like, you know, solid black, but I don't want it to like look solid black, you know what I'm saying, in the drawing because then it would be like like a really big focal point. So I'm thinking I'll just add some black to this brown color I have and that'll tone it down a bit and then I can just color it in. Yeah, that seems better than it could be, you know? Like, I just don't want it to be super out there, you know? I kind of want it to look like a cohesive drawing. I'm trying, at least. <laughs> yeah, I think that worked, right? I'm getting the hang of this, slowly, maybe. <laughs> oh, shoot, I just colored in the whole sketchbook black and I didn't leave space for, like, the paper that I'm actually drawing on. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, my doggy's brown. I can color him in. I already have a brown here. <laughs> Dummy. So next I'd like to color in my jeans, but again, I don't want to have that like problem of having like a really harsh blue color. So I mean like, what if I just added the smidgiest of browns to the blue? Like I don't want to get a super muddy blue, but I don't want to have like a really blue blue, if you know what I mean. Let's try that out. Uh, I think that works. Like it doesn't look too gross, right? And it makes the whole picture sort of cohesive in a way. Now for my hair. Oh, that's like too dark. <laughs> that's a bit better. Still not quite my hair color, but it'll do. Right, and then I'm wearing a red shirt, so I guess I should draw myself in a red shirt. And uh, I could add a little bit of brown to that as well. Maybe help and then paint that on. Ooh, this is a really pretty color. It's really bright compared to like everything else in the drawing, but kind of okay with that because I love the color red. So I'll just let it be just like Paul McCartney says. I'm gonna take a little bit of a risk here and draw in my frizz with this pretty wide watercolor brush. Hey, <laughs> it's a bit exaggerated, but I like it. I think it's, um, well, my hair is really, really frizzy, so I mean, it fits. <laughs> so after drawing all that, I'm about like an eighth. I have like an eighth left of water in this brush, if that gives you any idea about the capacity. Are you gonna help me wait for my watercolors to dry? 
<laughs> so now I'm going to use this Faber Castell, you know, watercolor pencil that was provided in the scroller box, and I purposely need everything to be dry because this is water soluble and if it gets wet it's going to just spread everywhere. <laughs> I want to use it more of like as a liner or a liner pencil. It's a bit thick, like it has a pretty wide area that it covers, <laughs> but I think I'm okay with that because I do prefer a wider line art just personally with my art style, especially when I'm drawing in my more jelly bean art style. But yeah, I I'm liking this. I think it I think it suits the style pretty well. Okay, so I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but I'm really happy with the way these tripod legs came out. And then the hornet with a swoosh. I don't know why I've put this off for so long. I usually do this first, but let's do the eyes. Oh yeah, see. <laughs> as soon as you add that line up to the face, it just takes it from one thing to, you know, the next thing. Mm -hmm. Ah, see this looks, I like this a lot better now. <laughs> I'm a lot happier with this. I kind of like the way, like the line, it's not line, well, it's line art. The pencil is kind of like an off black, if that's even like a color. It's gotta be, you know, you, have you ever gone to like a performance and like all the kids are wearing black pants and like polos and there's the one kid who has like an off black colored pants, you, you know what I'm saying. They're not quite as black as the other pants. <laughs> That's kind of what this pencil feels like to me. And I think it really fits the like pastel tones of the watercolors that I use. So I'm actually kind of happy with the way this is turning out. Ooh. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> it's nice to feel this way. The background, on the other hand, <laughs> that that could use a little uh, work. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe if I had just filled it all in with like a solid color, that could have helped. And then like used watercolor strokes to create the weeds up on top of that. That could make it look like a little fuller. But looking at the weeds that I'm looking at, you know, right now that I'm actually sitting next to, they're pretty sparse as well. So, I mean, it kind of suits what I drew. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do anything to change it for now but <laughs> it just goes to show you I need to practice my uh, background skills, that's for sure. If this were like a video game, I'd have like one background skill point. <laughs> I need to start putting more skills into that, you know? <laughs> Gotta add that hair swirl. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm just, you know, going over the same places and not really adding anything of value to this drawing. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> Is it done? Is it done? Should I keep tweaking it? Um, I mean, like, I could fix this right here. Oh, uh, yeah, his mullet. My doggy's mullet. Maybe darken up his face just a little. Oh, well, I guess I could sign it. <laughs> Why do I always forget to, like, sign everything I draw? It's, it's becoming a thing. <laughs> anyway, here, I guess, is my finished illustration. Hey, what do you think? I'm actually quite happy with the way it turned out. Especially since, I don't know, everything just feels weird about me being here and drawing it. And, like, even, like... More so when I started, things felt off, but like the more I got used to it, I just sort of like got into the rhythm and just, you know, drew. Just did my thing. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me sketch this out and color it in and stuff and coming along with me on this adventure. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening for the levels. Bye. I can't believe I just said that in public. <laughs>